just leaving Hazelford Locks. Really nice moorings here. There's a selection on the upper side with water and there's all the normal facilities. And then on the lower side just here, it's quite funky because there's different heights for different sized boats because obviously it's a river and it doesn't just cater for small cruises and narrow boats. It caters for gigantic yachts and a hundred thousand pound yachts and all sorts of things I've seen go through the locks. Multiple hundred thousand. Really nice mooring though, nice and calm again. I had to leave because the, the cruiser there, Fury, was cooking the most deliciously smelling breakfast. He was obviously cooking bacon and eggs and things and it smelt fantastic and I've already eaten my breakfast today so no more. But today I have that last little hop to Newark and that is supposed to last around about 90 minutes. Um, so it won't be a long journey today. There are a couple of lovely mooring spots right on the river as you head north towards Newark-on-Trent. Here at Fiskerton, where there's a popular traditional country pub but with a modern feel, and here just south of the town at Farndon. Staythorpe Power Station dominates the northern side of the river here, and just after it is a huge weir. You're advised to stay on the eastern side of the river when heading downstream, and I can see why. After a relatively short amount of orange barriers, you only know there is a weir here because the waterline drops away to nothing. I passed Newark Marina, which mainly caters for cruises, and moored up just before Mill Bridge, which is the first bridge as you enter the town. The origins of Newark on Trent are possibly Roman, as it's so close to the Fossway Roman Road. Right on the river's edge are the remains of Newark Castle. In a charter thought to date back to 1135, King Henry I granted the Bishop of Lincoln permission to build the castle. This castle was most likely of timber construction and was built in stone towards the end of the century. The town grew around the castle as well as a large marketplace. It's now lined with historic buildings. It was a centre for the wool and cloth trades. In the English Civil War, the town was besieged by parliamentary forces and had to be relieved by Prince Rupert in a battle known as the Relief of Newark. During the English Civil War, Newark was a mainstay of royalist cause, Charles I having raised his standard in nearby Nottingham. It was attacked in February 1643 by two troops of horsemen, but beat them back. The town fielded at times as many as 600 soldiers and raided Nottingham, Grantham, Northampton, Gainsborough and others with mixed success, but enough to cause it to rise to national notice. Oh, blimey, it's just gone midnight and I've just been woken up by um, a load of banging and some kids jumping on the roof 
um, it doesn't half wake you up. I've never had it before in all the towns and cities I've been through. And I'm currently in Newark and I'm not staying here another night. I'm leaving this town. So I got lots of sleep in the end. Dear me. Well, I've moved on up, up the, the river a tiny bit and I've come towards Newark Town Lock. And because it's quite early in the morning, there's no volunteer here yet. And so hence there's um, orange lights, which indicate that when they're on, you've got to do it all yourself. So I've got my waterways key and I like this sign. Anyway, so it's a quite a big lock. It's probably the biggest lock I've had to manage on my own. But let's see if I can work out how to do it. I've got to fill it, open the gates, drive in, empty it, open the gates and drive out, and then close the gates again. So let's see what I can do. Please keep clear of the lock gate area. Please keep clear of the lock gate area. So I'm just going to open one gate. Um, this lock is probably wide enough to have three boats in, not alone one side by side. So I'll open one gate. Um, and drive Alice in. It's all very strange. Seems to fill up quite fast. I wouldn't like to live near here though with these. Please keep clear of the Luckgate area announcements going on all the time, but. That was quite lucky just as I came into the lock uh, the volunteer lock keeper started his day so I just um, stopped the boat got my keys out and he's gonna carry on and, and do the rest which was quite good because this is a very deep lock and I had the challenge of mooring up along the side climbing up a huge way up the ladders to go and um, let the water out and open gates etc so Thank you very much, Mr. Volunteer. To be honest, I was a bit annoyed with myself as between bridges 22 and 23, there are some low moorings dedicated to smaller craft like narrowboats. It also looks like this pontoon may be protected by a gate, so I could have avoided children jumping on the roof. First thing I'm going to do today is get some fuel at King's Marina here. So the pump was out of order. I drove all the way in, I reversed up to the pump, and then I had a sign on the front saying out of order. You would have thought that King's Marina would put a sign up at the gate saying no diesel, but anyway, I've got more than half a tank left, but it's really annoying when you navigate your way into tricky marinas with the wind blowing and then find out it's completely pointless.
Whilst in the lock then, we've just agreed with both the cruisers, because the narrow boats are obviously a lot slower, they will pass us and carry on on their journey. So I'm just keeping to the starboard side a little bit to allow them to zoom past. Hopefully they don't make too many waves. This is all very different to travelling on a canal, I must say. Certainly does create a couple of waves. <laughs> Not really used to this. <laughs> Bobbing about on a river. Obviously, the further I go along the trench, the trench gets wider and wider and wider. I'm going up to Cromwell Lock today. I'm meeting up with a, a good friend to have some lunch. And I'm going to moor up there because from there onwards it's tidal and I need to know what time is best to travel. I need to get some charts. Um, and it's a I thought this was a different experience, but from Cromwell Lock onwards, it's even more completely different to traveling on a canal. It's all great fun though. You like wearing that jacket, don't you? It makes you nice and comfortable, and you just sit down really leisurely. I suppose there's a bit of padding on your bum. As on all rivers, the key thing to remember is don't cut the corners. If you cut them too sharply, um, you're bound to get stuck on a sandbank. So it's really strange sort of aiming towards trees purely to keep in the middle. I've had no problems yet. Um, but you do notice it when there's oncoming traffic it will look like they're aiming directly for you so you sort of move over slightly and they move over slightly but both of us are trying to keep in the middle it's not like on a canal where you go right over to the right hand side or to the starboard side and let them pass on the port side because um, you might get stuck At the end of the day I found a mooring spot and a couple of helpers at Cromwell Lock where I stayed for a few nights. If you've not already subscribed please do, it doesn't cost you anything and by clicking the bell icon you'll be notified about future releases. Until next time, see you later.